This Way for the Gas, Ladies and Gentlemen, by Tadeusz Borowski. All of us walk around naked. The delousing is finally over, and our striped suits are back from the tanks of Cyclone B solution, an efficient killer of lice in clothing and of men in gas chambers. Only the inmates in the blocks cut off from ours by the Spanish goats still have nothing to wear. But all the same, all of us walk around naked. The heat is unbearable. The camp has been sealed off tight. Not a single prisoner, not one solitary louse can sneak through the gate. The labor commandos have stopped working. All day, thousands of naked men shuffle up and down the roads, cluster around the squares, or lie against the walls and on top of the roofs. We have been sleeping on plain boards since our mattresses and blankets are still being disinfected. From the rear blockhouses, we have a view of the FKL, Frauen Konzentration Lager, female concentration camp. There, too, the delousing is in full swing. 28,000 women have been stripped naked and driven out of the barracks. Now they swarm around the large yard between the blockhouses. The heat rises. The hours are endless. We are without even our usual diversion. The wide roads leading to the crematoria are empty. For several days now, no new transports have come in. Part of Canada has been liquidated and detailed to a labor commando one of the very toughest at Harmens. For there exists in the camp a special brand of justice based on envy. When the rich and mighty fall, their friends see to it that they fall to the very bottom. And Canada, our Canada, which smells of, not of maple forest but of French perfume, has fortunes and diamonds and currencies from all over Europe. Several of us sit on the top bunk, our legs dangling over the edge. We slice the neat loaves of crisp, crunchy bread, it is a bit coarse to the taste, the kind that stays fresh for days. Sent all the way from Warsaw, only a week ago my mother held this white loaf in her hands. Dear Lord, dear Lord. We unwrap the bacon, the onion, we open a can of evaporated milk. Henry the fat Frenchman dreams aloud of the French wine brought by the transports from Strasbourg, Paris, Marseille. Sweat streams down his body. Listen, mon ami, next time we go up on the loading ramp, I'll bring you real champagne. You haven't tried it before, eh? No, but you'll never be able to smuggle it through the gate, so stop teasing. Why not try and organize some shoes for me instead? You know, the perforated kind with a double sole, and what about that shirt you promised me long ago? Patience, patience. When the new transports come, I'll bring all you want. We'll be going on the ramp again. And what if there aren't any more cremo transports, I say spitefully. Can't you see how much easier life is becoming around here? No limit on packages, no more beatings. You even letters home. One hears all kind of talk and damn it, they'll run out of people. Stop talking nonsense. Henry's serious fat face moves rhythmically. His mouth is full of sardines. We have been friends for a long time, but I do not know his last name. Stop talking nonsense, he repeats, swallowing with effort. They can't run out of people, or we'll starve to death in this blasted camp. All of us live on what they bring. All? We have our packages. Sure, you and your friend, and ten other friends of yours. Some of you Poles get packages. But what about us, and the Jews, and the Ruskies? And what if we had no food, no organization from the transports? Do you think you'd be eating those packages of yours in peace? We wouldn't let you. You would. You'd starve to death like the Greeks. Around here, whoever has grub has power. Anyway, you have enough. We have enough. So why argue? Right. Why argue? They have enough. I have enough. We eat together and we sleep on the same bunks. Henry slices the bread. He makes a tomato sa salad. It tastes good with the commissary mustard. Below us, naked, sweat-drenched men crowd the narrow barracks aisles or lie packed in eights and tens in the lower bunks. Their nude, withered bodies stink of sweat and excrement. Their cheeks are hollow. Directly beneath me in the bottom bunk lies a rabbi. He has covered his head with a piece of rag, torn off a blanket, and reads from a Hebrew prayer book. There is no shortage of this type of literature at the camp, wailing loudly, monotonously. Can't somebody shut him up? He's been raving as if he'd caught God himself by the feet. I don't feel like moving. Let him rave. They'll take him to the oven that much sooner. Religion is the opium of the people, Henry, who is a communist and a retier, says sen sententiously. 
If they didn't believe in God and eternal life, they'd have smashed the crematoria long ago. Why haven't you done it then? The question is rhetorical. The Frenchman ignores it. Idiot, he says simply and stuffs a tomato in his mouth. Just as we finish our snack, there's a sudden commotion at the door. The Muslims scurry in fright to the safety of their bunks. A messenger runs into Block Elder's shack. The elder, his face solemn, steps out at once. Canada, on threaten, start, but fast. There's a transport coming. Great God, yells Henry, jumping off the bunk. He swallows the rest of his tomato, snatches his coat, screams, Rouse! Out! At the men below, and in a flash is at the door. We can hear a scramble in the other bunks. Canada is leaving for the ramp. Henry, the shoes, I call after him. Kind of angst. No worries, he shouts back, already outside. I proceed to put away the food. I tie a piece of rope around the suitcase where the onions and the tomatoes from my father's garden in Warsaw mingle with Portuguese sardines, bacon from Lublin, that's from my brother, and authentic sweet meats from Salonica. I tie it all up, pull on my trousers, and slide off the bunk. Platz! Make room, I yell, pushing my way through the Greeks. They step aside. At the door, I bump into Henry. Was ist los? What is happening? Want to come with us on the ramp? Sure, why not? Come along then, grab your coat. We're short of a few men. I've already told the capo, and he shoves me out of the barracks door. We line up. Someone has marked down our numbers. Someone up ahead yells, March! March! And now we are running towards the gate accompanied by the shouts of a multilingual throng that is already being pushed back to the barracks. Not everybody is lucky enough to be going on the ramp. We have almost reached the gate. Links, zwei, drei, wir, Munzen ab. Left, two, three, four, hats off. Erect, arms stretched stiffly along our hips, we march past the gate briskly, smartly, almost gracefully. A sleepy SS man with a large pad in his hand checks us off, waving us ahead in groups of five. Hundert! Hundred, he calls after we have all passed. Stimmt! Right, comes a hoarse answer from out front. We march fast, almost at a run. There are guards all around, young men with automatics. We pass Camp 2B, then some deserted barracks and a clump of unfamiliar green, apple and pear trees. We cross the circle of watchtowers and running, burst onto the highway. We have arrived. Just a few more yards, there, surrounded by trees, is the ramp. A cheerful little station, very much like any other provincial railway system. Stop. A small square framed by t tall chestnuts and paved with yellow gravel. Not far off, beside the road, squats a tiny wooden shed, uglier and more flimsy than the ugliest and flimsiest railway shack. Farther along lies stacks of old rails, heaps of wooden beams, barracks, parts, bricks, paving stones. This is where they load freight for Birkenau, supplies for the construction of the camp, and people for the gas chambers. Trucks drive around, load up lumber, cement, people, a regular daily routine. And now the guards are being posted along the rails, across the beams in the gray sh green shade of the Silesian chestnuts to form a tight circle around the ramp. They wipe the sweat from their faces and sip out of their canteens. It is unbearably hot. The sun stands motionless at its zenith. Fall out! We sit down in the narrow streaks of shade along the stacked rails. The hungry Greeks, several of them managed to come along, God only knows how, rummage underneath the rails. One of them finds some pieces of mildewed bread, another a few half-rotten sardines. They eat. Schweinedreck, filthy pigs, spits a young, tall guard with corn-colored hair and dreamy blue eyes. For God's sake, any minute you'll have so much food to stuff down your guts you'll bust. He adjusts his gun, wipes his face with a handkerchief. Hey, you fatso. His boot lightly touches Henry's shoulder. Pass mal auf. Want a drink? Sure, but I haven't got any marks, replies the Frenchman with a professional air. Schade. Too bad. Come, come, Herr Posten. Isn't my word good enough anymore? Haven't we done business before? How much? One hundred. Gemacht? Deal? Gemacht. Deal. We drink the water, lukewarm and tasteless. It will be paid for by the people who have not yet arrived. Now you be careful, says Henry, turning to me. He tosses away the empty bottle. It strikes the rails and bursts into tiny fragments. Don't take any money. They might be checking. 
Anyway, who the hell needs money? You've got enough to eat. Don't take suits either, or they'll think you're planning to escape. Just get a shirt, silk only with a collar, and a vest. And if you find something to drink, don't bother calling me. I know how to shift my, for myself, but you watch your step or they'll let you have it. Do they beat you up here? Naturally. You've got to have eyes in your ass. Arschaugen. Around us sit the Greeks, their jaws working greedily like huge human insects. They munch on stale lumps of bread. They are restless, wondering what will happen next. The sight of the large beams and the stacks of rails has them worried. They dislike carrying heavy loads. Was wir arbeiten? They ask. Are we working? Nix. Transport kommen. Alles crematorium. Comprise? Nothing. Transport coming. All crematorium. Understand? Alles verstehen. All understood, they answer in crematorium Esperanto. All is well. They will not have to move the heavy rails or carry the beams. In the meantime, the ramp has become increasingly alive with activity, increasingly noisy. The crews are being divided into those who will open and unload the arriving cattle cars and those who will be posted by the wooden steps. They receive instructions on how to proceed most efficiently. Motorcycles drive up, delivering SS officers, bemetalled, glittering with brass, beefy men with highly polished boots and shiny, brutal faces. Some have brought their briefcases, others hold thin, flexible whips. This gives them an air of military readiness and agility. They walk in and out of the commissary for the miserable little shack by the road serves as their, serves as their commissary where in the summertime they drink mineral water, studentenquelle, and where in winter they can warm up with a glass of hot wine. They greet each other in the state-approved way, raising an arm Roman fashion, then shake hands cordially, exchange warm smiles, discuss mail from home, their children, their families. Some stroll majestically on the ramp. The silver squares on their collars glitter. The gravel crunches under their boots. Their bamboo whips snap impatiently. We lie against the rails in the narrow streaks of shade, breathe unevenly, occasionally exchange a few words in our various tongues, and gaze listlessly at the majestic men in green uniforms, at the green trees, and at the church steeple of a distant village. The transport is coming, somebody says. We spring to our feet. All eyes turn in one direction. Around the bend, one after another, the cattle cars begin rolling in. The train backs into the station. A conductor leans out, waves his hand, blows a whistle. The locomotive whistles back with a shrieking noise, puffs. The train rolls slowly alongside the ramp. In the tiny barred windows appear pale, wilted, exhausted human faces, terror-stricken women with tangled hair, unshaven men. They gaze at the station in silence. And then, suddenly, there's a stir inside the cars and a pounding against the wooden boards. Water! Air! Weary, desperate cries. Heads push through the windows. Mouths gasp frantically for air. They draw a few breaths, then disappear. Others come in their place, then also disappear. The cries and moans grow louder. A man in a green uniform, covered with more glitter than any of the others, jerks his head impatiently. His lips twist in annoyance. He inhales deeply, then with a rapid gesture, throws his cigarette away and signals to the guard. The guard removes the automatic from his so shoulder, aims, sends a series of shots along the train. All is quiet now. Meanwhile, the trucks have arrived. Steps are being drawn up, and the Canada men stand ready at their post by the train doors. The SS officer with the briefcase raises his hand. Whoever takes gold or anything at all besides food will be shot for stealing Reich property. Understand? Verstanden? Jawohl, yes. We answer eagerly. Also los, come on, begin. <laughs>